So this is uh, an important video uh, because in this video I will teach you uh, the techniques and and I will give you some tips yeah on how to answer what we call situation questions. Now in your exam or uh, particularly in your uh, law exams, sometimes you will come across questions that do not directly ask you to give something. For instance, the question doesn't ask you to give the five elements of a valid contract or you know the um, uh, five obligations of um, housing developers in Malaysia under Housing Development Act. Sometimes you may come across questions such as what you can see on the screen right now. So these are called situation questions. So in situa situation questions, okay, you uh, need to be able to use your um, skills or, or what I'm going to the, the techniques that I'm going to impart uh, in this lecture. Uh, in terms of how to extract the important information, how to present your answers as well. Uh, because you don't want to lose marks um, just because you do not know the technique on how to answer situation questions. So you can see there two examples of uh, exam questions that um, have been asked before this year. So one was in 2021-2022 session, okay, the other one on uh, the right is a special exam on 21-22. Both are situation questions and if, is, uh, if you notice both are on Contracts Act. Yeah. Now um, uh, the question about Mike and Jay, okay, if you read okay, all, the, um, all the needed ingredients or all the needed all the important uh, information are contained eh, in the situation given. So um, and the marks that that normally accompany uh, case situation questions can be quite uh, big, yeah, quite significant. So that is why it's so important for you to learn yeah, the correct technique on how to answer situation questions. Because you may think, you know, um, the question is so long, it's so hard to answer. But if you follow the technique that I'm going to teach you, I think all of you will have a chance to answer these situation questions correctly and also in the manner that is required by your um, by the examiner okay first things first what do you need to do once you have the situation in front of you okay do not panic okay don't panic and normally we'll use simple I, I don't think it's very difficult language to understand normally the the situation is clear um, and we do not complicate the situation by giving too many parties uh, inside uh, in the situation given, okay? Because you, uh, this is only at a degree level and normally first uh, year, second year. So, what is needed is for you to analyze the situation, the situation that is given to you, okay? So, relax, read the situation first. So, these are my tips yeah, on how to analyze the situation uh, when you are faced with a situation question in, in your exam. As I said there, read the situation to determine this information. So what kind of information that you uh, that you notice or that you pay attention to when you read? One is the relevant facts. So you read to gather, to obtain okay, the pertinent facts uh, uh, that, that, that are very important to the case. For instance, you distinguish or you de uh, determine who are the parties to the case. So is it between A and B? A is a person, B is a person, or A a company, B is a is a person, or is it between uh, uh, an individual and a local authority? So determine that first. Okay, use your pen or use your pencil to to underline and also to highlight or to, to jot down. Okay, um, who the parties are. Also the timeline. Okay, when you read. Okay, pay attention to the grammar, for instance, the grammar, whether the situation is ongoing or whether the situation is in the past uh, or what kind of timeline are we talking about? Is it um, over a period of time or is it something that has occurred before? Okay, and when? Is it within this year or last year or whatever? Okay, so establish the parties and also the timeline first. The, those are the basic uh, facts that you need to uh, you need to obtain or you need to discern uh, from your reading of the situation. The second one is when you are reading the situation, get the feel of the law topic. What 
what is the law topic that is being discussed okay now for first year students for instance you have three choices is it uh, regarding uh, Malaysian legal system or is it regarding um, contracts or the third one is or is it regarding torts uh, if it thought if it is torts is it negligence or is it nuisance okay uh, so while reading discern that uh, is it MLS Malaysian legal system contract or torts uh, is it a mix of two topics also the same for second year as well for land law for instance yeah for real estate law for instance get to get the feel or, or um, understand try to understand and jot down uh, that is very important write down your feel or what of what the law topic which is relevant in that particular situation is it national land court if it's national land court is it regarding title of uh, uh, if it's um, strata law is it regarding um, uh, interflow leakage for instance strata management act right so get that first get the feel of it or, or try to try to guesstimate uh, that's a good word guesstimate guess and estimate right you are guessing but uh, with a logical thinking uh, to back up your your guesswork just now not just simply wildly um, guessing something uh, guess something logically what is the law topic being um, assessed then okay go to the legal issues so you now um, say okay is um, Malaysian legal system so is it regarding division of power or is it regarding the court system etc uh, etc et or uh, if it's contract um, is the is the situation um, tr is trying to, to to decide on the validity of the contract uh, whether there's breach uh, what kind of remedy uh, or is it regarding termination of contract okay and if it's thought which thought we learn in class uh, nuisance and also negligence right right less and flesh to, to a certain degree so which thought are we um, is the question all about yeah get to estimate get to guesstimate uh, the, the the legal issues uh, under the law topic just now okay which element of thought for instance is it um, regarding duty of care is it regarding the breach of duty of care same with um, law uh, land law for instance uh, is it regarding uh, validity of the land title or validity of the dealings uh, or is it uh, regarding um, if it's strata is it regarding whose um, uh, responsibility it is okay for the situation being given for instance uh, interflow leakage who is responsible for that kind uh, so try to um, apa nama tu, try to jot down lah, try to write down what are the legal issues being uh, assessed or being asked of you then okay this is good immediately based on your uh, thinking based on your immediate um, apa, analysis lah, uh, write down or your opinion of the case uh, whether there is a breach whether the contract is valid whether the contract is not valid okay jot down uh, does uh, does the plaintiff have a case is the defendant liable is there a valid contract is the defendant's action constitutional this is for mls malaysian legal system for instance yeah so put your opinion first because sometimes uh, normally uh, your your first instinct is the correct instinct normally normally lah uh, but, no, but but if you're not sure maybe you jot down a few uh, opinions that you have uh, you may say valid because of what invalid because of what and then later on you weigh you weigh the situation according to your opinion uh, but it's very important to analyze the the situation first do not um, read and then answer the question immediately don't do that plan your answer by first of all discerning the the facts and who are the parties involved then you discern the law topic is it contract is it um, tort or is it uh, national land code or is it um, apa nama, uh, housing development act then okay pecahkan you go deep you go deeper if it's um, contracts act is it regarding validity of contract is it regarding the element of the contract valid contract which element uh, so you you narrow down lagi then barulah your opinion whether there is a case or whether the plaintiff uh, apa, plaintiff punya men, uh, will win or defendant will win at this stage it doesn't matter what you write it can be um, your own apa language kan katakan you tak, you don't use the word liable ke or guilty eh? there's no guilty ya eh? civil kita tak panggil tak pakai perkataan guilty liable or not liable um, you boleh lah at this stage gunakan your own words not guilty yes guilty but in the uh, essay itself do not 
use uh, uh, those words. But for at this stage, it is okay for you to jot down your thoughts uh, in your own language. Okay, now that you have finished uh, reading the situation, gathering the important information, just now, kind okay, the facts, uh, the law topic, uh, the issues or not, what is the next thing that you must do? Okay, next thing to do is to, to write the answer because you've jotted down just now, okay, in brief, all the important details. Now, how do you write the answer? I have four steps, four steps that you can follow uh, to answer, uh, to, uh, to, to organize your answer in a way that um, that can apa, that can be very clear to the examiner and also can, that can help you lah. Huh? Now, the first step is to state the issue. I the I huh? issue whereby okay after uh, apa, reading the situation you have found out the the facts of the case right uh, the law topic the issue and uh, your opinion state the brief facts and the problem very briefly. Okay, do not spend uh, a page uh, to write on the facts and also the problem. And do not, please, do not simply copy the situation. Use your own words. Uh, you try to formulate, you try to uh, paraphrase or you try to rephrase again the situation using your own understanding on what's happening. Of course, you can use certain phrases in the, in the situation. Okay, And there's no problem at all by copy, if you copy the, the paragraph. But, you know... In terms of clarity of answer, that will not be good. Yeah, to just simply copy the situation in the question and then put it put that as the facts of the uh, and also um, part of the problem that will not be helpful. Uh, because normally in exam we do not have time uh, to to write uh, such long answers uh, and sometimes you you left out the uh, important uh, details uh, in the answer. So brief facts and also the problem itself. For instance. Okay, these are the, the brief facts that are pertinent in answering the question. For instance, A is 17 years old. So, you look again at the situation and then extract the important uh, the important facts and also the problem. Uh, when uh, in your reading just now, put it in one paragraph. Such as uh, what's, uh, what you can see here. A is 17 years old. So, that's pertinent fact when entering into contract. So, that was a contract law. Lah. Uh, whether A is competent to ed, uh, enter into the contract, which will affect the validity of the contract. So, that is the problem that you, uh, do, that you want to solve in the question. So, the brief facts and then the problem uh, in the question. So, that serves as the introduction. The issue can serve as the introduction to your uh, answer to your answer. Okay, normally I say you have introduction, you have conclusion, right? So this I issue, okay, can be the introduction to your answer, whereby you put the facts or you repeat the facts again using your own words, and then you put or you write the problem, okay, in the paragraph. The second one or the second um uh, upper thing to write is the law, the law solution. If I is the problem. What could be the solution to the problem? For instance, uh, section, the law, law solution, section berapa of what act? Or um, section, um, besides section, you can have um, upper, uh, principles or doctrines, law doctrines. For instance, ultra virus because of what? Or unconstitutional because uh, contravenes uh, Article 13 of the Federal Constitution, for instance. So what is the law that you will use to 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 apa to uh, solve the problem that you state in I okay so the solution to the question whether uh, A yeah who 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 is 17 years old when entering the contract whether he uh, whether the contract is valid is contained the answer is contained in section 11 contracts act for instance which states that the persons competent to contract must be the age of majority so that is the law solution kan so it can be as I said before I repeat. It can be either sections daripada data, section 5, national land code, uh, which um, apa defines land. Kalau ada question, kalau problem ni berkenaan uh, whether an object is a chattel or a uh, fixture, for instance. Or uh, what else? Um, you can go to Strata Management Act to look at... Um, to look at the definition of proprietor, for instance, kan? Uh, look at that or um apa nama law situation uh, in terms uh, in the in a in a case situation that asks you to 
uh, determine the validity uh, of uh, a government action, whether it's ultra-virus or not. So what is the meaning of ultra-virus beyond the scope? Kan? So that will be the law solution. Then, A, you argue. Using the law solution, you try to link that to the problem. You try to answer the problem by using the law solution. Ini uh, laguna dia. So if you imagine, kan? The second part, the law solution tu. Um, what you've learned so far in class, I like um, building blocks tau. Macam Lego. Kan building blocks macam tu. Uh, daripada banyak banyak pilih, you pilih-pilih. So now you pilih yang relevant saja. Contohnya situation memerlukan you bina helikopter. So you, you pilih lah. Roda, you pilih lah body dia kan. Yang cube, yang ada empat apa. Uh, tangan tu ke. And then you you pilih dia. Kipas kan. Uh, so must you must use the law solutions that are suitable. Argument is when you assemble your Lego just now. Uh, you you try to uh, make sense uh, of the law solution. Try to link that with the with the problem just now. Uh, so in this case, A is argument whereby you apply the law related to the facts of the case. Uh, dalam issue tu tadi, okay? Again, I is you state the issue. It is by your introduction that will serve as your introduction. The facts, brief facts of the case is between who and who, A is what, B is what, plaintiff is who, uh, defendant is who, and then uh, what happened, uh, A katakan encroach on uh, B's land. Uh, itu dia punya brief facts. Okay. Then uh, the problem is whether there is a uh, trespass. Okay. That will be the issue. Law, uh, you go to, for instance, National Land Code section berapa ataupun um, apa nama uh, the, the uh, rights the exclusive right and enjoyment of a land owner under section uh, 44 for instance kan uh, so that can be used as a law solution and then you try to link together the solution and the problem just now tunjukkan macam mana how to solve the problem by using the law solution so it could look something like this. Since A is below the age of majority as required by Section 11 Contracts Act, he is not competent to enter into the contract. So you see there, okay, the, uh, apa, what is being done, that is putting the solution within the problem just now, uh, uh, law solution, which is Section 11 Contracts Act, in the situation which is A is below the age of majority and he's not competent to enter the contract. And then finally, don't forget, do not leave your answer hanging. You must have C, which is conclusion. C stands for conclusion, which is your opinion of the outcome of the case, whether the contract is valid or not. Uh, so you must conclude. Okay. If the question asks you to give advice, your conclusion must be advice. If your uh, if your if the question asks you to provide um, about your opinion. Put your opinion there, uh, your opinion of the outcome. Okay. In my opinion, uh, macam tu kan. But whatever it is, you must have a, a statement that ties together lah. Uh, your apa? Uh, your, uh, not ties together. That reflects. That reflects your overall opinion. Uh, ataupun the overall answer to that particular question. So in this case, you put normally you can. Uh, there are several phrases that can you can use. Okay. Uh, you can put in conclusion, ataupun uh, you um, you can put uh, in my opinion, ataupun it is advice that you know. So depending on the uh, the requirement of the case uh, question. So in this case, you can conclude uh, daripada issue and law and argument of A being uh, of age of major uh, of minor minority itu. In conclusion, as A does not fulfill the competence element because competence is when someone is uh, of the age of majority can 18 years old. So, sekarang ni dia tak fulfill. A does not fulfill the competence element of the contract. The contract is invalid and has no legal effect. So, that will be the conclusion from your question. Okay, to recap what we've learned so far, the technique to answer, to write the answer for case situation is by using the technique I like. Yeah? I stands for issue. L stands for law, A stands for argument, C finally you must have the fourth element which is the, the conclusion. So you must have all four elements yeah, for situation question. Now the question is how do you make the argument? Because sometimes this can be um, what you call a, a high hurdle lah, for you to overcome. Lah. Macam mana nak tuliskan argument tersebut. Okay? But uh, it's very... Uh, 
bear in mind this is a law question. So the firstly, okay, firstly you must be clear about what is the law related to the problem. Okay, once you have, um, you have the correct law. Okay, um, um, even though you answer it, um, apa nama using incorrect grammar ke English ke doesn't matter, yeah. Just get the correct law. Okay, which can be either. Okay, the statutory provision. Statutory provision means you 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 tengok statute atau you tengok akta. You look at the written law, whether there are certain sections that you can use to support your answer. Okay, certain uh, provision, certain apa, uh, apa nama certain sections, certain regulations, certain bylaws, certain articles from the federal constitution state the statutory provision. Itu maksudnya statutory provision lah, written law. Then then, in some cases, you may add or instead of using um, apa nama tu, uh, statutory provisions, using written law, you may use case law. You boleh gunakan case okay, uh, to support your argument just now. You may, uh, you, apa, uh, instead of um, apa nama tu, using uh, sections, gunakan nama case okay, ataupun gunakan case yang similar in facts. Yang ada similar facts with your current situation, okay, to support your answer. Now it says the state the case law. For instance, the full name, but it is very, uh, apa nama, uh, expected that during the exam you may apa, experience uh, blanking out, ke kan lupa lah the full name, ah, uh, let alone remembering the year kan. So it's okay to shorten the case name to, for instance. Just the plaintiff defendant, Chapel versus Nestle, macam tu. Or you can put re tu, uh, re reference, re reference, reference Nestle or Nestle case. Just make sure you have a portion of the name and the name that you want to cite, the portion of the name that you want to cite tu, is a uh, distinguishable punya nama lah. Uh, kalau you kata John case, susah lah kan? Because John is very common. Uh, so make sure you remember portion the portion of the case name that is memorable uh, that um, that is easily identifiable to, uh, by your examiner now second one is to make the argument ini ini lagi satu this is another thing that you must uh, you must practice you must also bear in mind how macam mana you know the law just now you know the section you know the case law but how do you insert that kan macam mana how do how do i string the sentence lah how do i make the sentence how to cite the law you can use according to, according to section 24 contracts, right? according to section 5 national land code, according to, okay, easy, itu yang paling simple, the simplest. Next, okay, you can put the, the, the provision first, the statutory provision first, you can put the article of the federal constitution first, states that, the ninth schedule of the federal constitution states that, the uh, section 5 national land code states that, okay, section 2 housing development act states that, uh, so, Dia punya provision di depan and then state that. Menyatakan lah. Right? Or, okay, uh, or you can say in the Nestle case, it was held that uh, you, you nak gunakan judgment or decision uh, from a case law. In the Donahue and Stevenson case, it was held that um, the third party or the, uh, the, the what do you call it, the manufacturer owes a duty of care. Kan? Uh, that is the, the gist of the decision in Donahue and Stevenson that you want to use in the uh, current case. Or, uh, or you can also um, what you call it, write longer sentence in the, the facts of this case to, 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 to link your current case with the case law that you are using. The facts of this case are similar to the Donahue and Stevenson case whereby the court decided that the manufacturer has a relationship with the end user of the product. So it means that you are applying Okay, the facts in the case law with your current situation pun boleh. Uh, so, boleh juga gunakan uh, sebarang uh, kandungan dalam uh, sections or provision yang you ingat lah. Uh, in the, uh, but, and use the kandungan tu in the current situation, situation case. Uh, boleh juga if you recall that. So, it's not just remembering. Okay, the the relevant sections, the relevant articles, but it's how you present the law just now. So you present the section, you present the case law just now. That is quite important as well. Okay.
Now, this is a very important, as I said before, a very important uh, element of the uh, answer, which is the conclusion. Do not leave your answer hanging. Uh, you must tie up everything neatly lah, uh, in the conclusion. And how do you make the conclusion? Okay, how do you make the conclusion? A good tip is summarize your main advice. Uh, you use a summary of your main advice in the last paragraph, which uh, now becomes your conclusion. So, apa advice yang utama di situ? Nak pergi court ke ataupun no contract ke? Summarize uh, your main advice. Now, these are some examples. For instance, uh, in conclusion, uh, so use the word in conclusion, P can bring action for nuisance if he can prove damage to the property. So, ini main advice you in this particular case. Or, in sum, P can bring action for both negligence and nuisance. So, that's your uh, conclusion, your advice. Uh, you, advise, you are advising the plaintiff to bring action for two thoughts. Uh, sebab you rasa yakin lah. Huh? After reading, you feel confident that uh, uh, there, there are cases, uh, there are elements of uh, negligence and nuisance that the plaintiff can uh, prove yeah, uh, according to the facts of the situation given. However, uh, tapi you bagi lagi panjang lagi to make your, your uh, answer better. However, P has a better case in nuisance because his action may constitute an intervening act that may bring the chain of causation sebab dalam in, news, in negligence, if there is an intervening act that will the, the that will break the chain of causation and therefore there will be no uh, negligence can proven. So, you are now uh, apa nama, displaying your full knowledge of thought lah kalau macam tu. Uh, this will be the perfect answer. Instead of just going to the to to apa, advice on the best option or the best alternative uh, best answer you terus you bagi dua and then you tell your reasoning why this instead of this that also is possible lah but this is depending on the, the fact of the case now another way is it is advice i use that word so you use um, in conclusion in sum itu macam word yang biasa kita dengar lah ataupun phrase yang biasa kita kita dengar ah, when you want to conclude something but you can also use because if the answer, if the question asks you to advise advise uh, the the plaintiff ataupun encik ali ke mr amran ke whatever it is advice for the plaintiff to bring defendant to court because there is a clear breach of condition so that is also acceptable uh, because that summarizes your advice uh, dalam bentuk uh, advice macam tu it is advice another way is okay you can also state from the above argument or kalau ada banyak arguments from the above arguments it can be seen that the non schedule puts land under state for pur purview you you summarize balik kan your law tadi eh? and therefore so this is your finding ataupun your main um, yalah your main advice ataupun your main find therefore the federal government the plaintiff cannot claim uh, that the land is theirs okay so that is uh, putting uh, one part of the sentence um, apa, to represent the law, the main law, and then another part of the sentence representing uh, the implication of that law to the case. Okay, so these are some tips, yeah, for you to have in mind, lah, huh, when you are, um, apa, um, when you are writing or when you are answering. Um, case situations. First of all, I've always said this, please read, huh? not just this case, but also all questions. Lah, huh? Please read the case carefully. Okay, baca betul-betul. Read very carefully to extract the correct information. Huh? Jangan gopoh. Baca betul-betul siapa plaintiff, siapa defendant, whether there are one or two uh, parties involved or three. If, uh, for instance, there are three parties are all involved uh, in the case ataupun uh, the, the third um, uh, apa person can be a red herring kan so read the case carefully jangan go po okay and make them notes lah uh, dengan dengan apa dengan teliti the second one is uh, make the notes uh, to, to follow your reading just now highlight or underline important words uh. important words include the facts ataupun are there any clues in the situation are there any laws that you can uh, apa that yang dah diberi. For instance, they hint uh, in the constitution. Kan? So, underline that because now it's referring, for instance, to federal constitution. Uh, constitutional. Ke, uh? So, those hints uh, within the question itself can help you later on uh, in finding the correct law uh, to answer the question. Next, okay, besides reading and highlighting the important words, 
write down ha, ni penting jot down don't trust the apa your your head ha, don't trust your mind don't trust your brain during the uh, exams ha, to recall everything baca sekali everything is in your head no write down important info and also ideas while reading a good tip will also be you tulis setiap siap i lack tu i a i, I l a c so i you apa l apa kan so there's a framework there for you to fill in okay uh, you jot down the as uh, the brief words apa yang you nak masukkan in i l a c uh, write down important information and ideas while reading next is to write an outline of your answer first okay lah framework just now i like kan uh, you have written down there after that another tip is to read the case uh, carefully okay meaning that don't just read the situation but also go down tengok what is being required in the question okay not just the case but the question are you required to advise are you required to discuss are you required to elaborate so ini semua okay will determine your c your conclusion tu kalau kata if you don't give the advice you lose marks there if you don't uh, give a discussion whether uh, the pros and cons for instance kan uh, dalam conclusion you will lose marks there uh, so maknanya if write a read whether you are required to give advice ataupun discuss sahaja or just elaborate uh, uh, on a topic or on a matter then okay this is quite important as well i think this is the way you write your question because some people when they got uh, 10 20 mark punya question dia satu page tu panjang tak ada break langsung kan sebab dia ingat 20 mark so one paragraph no break into paragraphs okay pecahkan kepada perenggan-perenggan one paragraph for one argument uh, because maybe you have several ideas kan several ideas on the argument you rasa semua tu betul uh? don't put all your arguments in one paragraph break down one paragraph one argument one paragraph one argument do not mix too many points or arguments in one paragraph sebab nanti uh, because it your answer will be messy not just that if things are messy if the reader or the examiner is confused baca apa dia cakap ni uh? is he referring to this argument or that argument when uh, uh, concluding kan macam tu it will be messy and it will weaken the overall argument. Uh, your answer will not be structured. Your answer will not be organized. Uh, macam tu. So, dia akan weaken. Dia akan melemahkan lah, uh, the quality of your answer. Okay, now we put into practice what we learned just now regarding, first of all, reading, uh, analyzing the case and then writing your answer, right? So, this is an example okay, that we can do together. Uh, maybe you will you want to pause uh, the video right now um, to uh, uh, to enable you to read the case situation on your own. So you can pause it now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I assume that you have read the case situation. You have paused just now the video and then you have read the uh, case situation. So now remember what you need to do while you are reading. First of all, you need to. Uh, obtain or you need to extract or you need to underline the relevant facts uh, while you are reading. Now here the important ones are the plaintiff who's the plaintiff, who's the defendant. So in this case Akmal is the plaintiff the government is the defendant. Akmal uh, the plaintiff is always the one who has the grievance, uh, who has the case against the other party, the defendant or the respondent. So in this case the defendant is the government. So again what's the relevant facts that, that you need to underline so this all i think like in my opinion are all the relevant facts eh, that you must underline the rest are not very important those are all just like um background lah to the case okay but the crux ataupun the essence of the case tu ada di sini starting from uh, the fact that government had to enter uh, akmal's land immediately and erect retaining walls on uh, Akmal's land. No notice of so all these are all the relevant facts. No notice of compensation was given uh, from January until November and Akmal still could not enter his land. As a result, Akmal lost his livelihood. So the second one is what is the law topic here? Okay, look at the final, um, apa nama tu? Final sentence. So the last sentence, uh, government action. So that would be legality of the government's action would be the law topic being tested or being uh, being asked of you uh, to determine. So in this case, the topic is uh, MLS, Malaysian Legal System, regarding the uh, the constitutionality, uh, whether it is constitutional or not. Uh, government punya action itu. 
Then, uh, oh, come to think of it, some of you may, uh, no, 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 tak boleh lah. Uh, ultravirus is different. So, this one is legality of the government's action, whether it's constitutional to enter into someone's land, to take someone's property without giving compensation. So, legal issues, is it constitutional? Itu semua. Huh? So, you can pause again, can pause the video and have a look huh, at the legal issues uh, being, this, being, apa, um, being um, tested on you huh, in this situation. So, pause. Then, finally, step four, opinion. Uh, opinion on the case, uh, the, the conclusion. So, um, it's most likely that Article 13 of the Federal Constitution was not observed, most likely unconstitutional. So, that will be your um, your conclusion too. And then we go to the uh, second part, or second, um, sec yeah, when you have a uh, case situation, first is reading, the second one, uh, second part is uh, the writing uh, of, the, um, of the answer. Now, this is a model answer that you can write based on I like. Okay, I like, I, L, A, C, you don't remember. I like, I, the issue, L, the law, A, the uh, argument, C, the conclusion. So, pause the video and then have a look whether your answer matches I like uh, that is given in this um, slide. Uh, okay, this is another example of a case situation. Okay, you can pause the video now. Okay, uh, to read the case situation. Now, pause the video. Okay, I assume you have paused the video and ha uh, you have uh, read the case situation, uh, which, uh, apa nama, which involves Eric, yeah? Eric who applied for planning permission and then his planning permission was um, struck down or was um, refused uh, on the grounds that um, the new extension will interfere with the streetscape Okay, tapi, but Eric has complied, Eric's architect has complied with all the requirements and suddenly now, local authorities' reason for refusing planning permission was because it interferes with the streetscape, okay? So, uh, to opinion, the second paragraph shows the opinion of Eric and then finally, don't forget the last sentence, uh, said that is your instruction for this case, advise Eric on this case. Now, remember what we need to do while we were while we read the situation first thing is to determine the relevant facts right uh, can i say before underline or highlight the relevant facts who's the plaintiff who's the defendant so in this case the plaintiff is eric okay who is um, who has a case against or who wants to bring a case against the local authority so apa fakta dia fact of the case permission to semua tadi those are all the pertinent or relevant facts Bawah tu tak perlu. Ah. Opinion tu is not facts yang penting. Ah. Not important facts. The important facts are contained in the first paragraph. Now, we um, apa determine the law topic being as Okay, apa topic di sini? What's your apa, what's your answer just now? Okay, here is the legal principle. Ah, yang general sahaja, legal principle. Because the hint is within the a phrase beyond their legal authority. So, itulah sebenarnya. Right? This case is uh, testing you on your knowledge on the legal principle ultra-virus. Okay? Beyond their legal, uh, legal authority. What about the legal issues? Legal issues ni, does the action of local authority in referring planning permission to interfere with the streetscape ultra-virus or uh, acceptable? Okay? Then, finally, your conclusion or your opinion. Not conclusion, your opinion. Opinion, of course, lah. All because it says that all the requirements uh, have been fulfilled. So, kenapa? Huh? Why not re uh, refuse plot on the grounds yang tak, tak termasuk bawah uh, akta? Huh? So, most probably uh, ultra-virus. So, this will be your opinion. So, how to write this down neatly uh, using I like? So, it's in the next slide. So, uh, in this slide, it will show you uh, the model answer for the previous ca uh, case situation using I like I L A C. Now, uh, you can see there the law, kan? Uh, the law um, uh, now is regarded. You have two. One is the principle ultra virus. So that is uh, one law topic uh, of your answer, which is ultra virus principle. The other one, it uses a case law to support ultravirus too, which is Mamat bin Daud. Uh, so, there is, this is a, 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 an example of an answer whereby you can use uh, two laws. Uh, one is legal principle, the other one is a case law. Or you can use one written law, one unwritten law. Okay, so it depends on your knowledge lah at that time. Uh, so, it depends on the 
fact of the case as well. So in this case, ultravirus and Muhammad bin Dawud, huh? those two laws are being used to support uh, the apa nama the uh, your opinion uh, that uh, that is a uh, Eric has a case against the local authority and uh, Eric can uh, take the case to court uh, because we kata situ finally uh, for ultravirus. Uh, so most probably sudah beyond its legal authority itu. Okay. Now we go to the final um, example. Okay, the final example is actually a practice question uh, that you can do on your own using the techniques and tips that I have shared in this video. So again, what do you need to do? First of all, you practice on reading or analyzing the situation. Kan? Uh, remember what you need to do? Extract the facts. Okay, and then the lot find the law topic. Okay, and then uh, um, give your opinion, kan? Uh, and then after that, try uh, to use the ILAC method or ILAC technique to write down your answer. For your information, this practice question, okay, uh, has um, been, I think, um, exam question for two times already. Uh, yeah, uh, similar case or similar situation, but different names given uh, in the exam question. So, I think that's all from me. Okay, please use this opportunity to practice your case situation before your exam. Okay, bye-bye. Good luck.